Hey everyone, welcome to Unscripted on LinkedIn Live. And as I always say, I love catching up with my girlfriends that I've known forever and then meeting my new ones that become my forever girlfriends. And today I am so excited to introduce Jillian Haslam, my new girlfriend that I am so excited to welcome to the FQ community. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to Jillian. Jillian, so happy to have you here. Thank you so much, Shelly. I'm I'm very honored. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Oh, fantastic. Are you coming in from London? Yes, I'm calling in from London. Fantastic. So it's a little past tea time. I think it's time for drinks over there. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It's like quarter to eight at night. Oh, okay, so dinner time, late dinner time. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. you are a motivational speaker, a business coach, an educator, an author, a founder of uh, Remedia Trust. Yes, that's uh, the charities I have here. Yeah. Okay, well, you are a busy lady. You've got a lot going on. Tell us, you know, everything that you were up to. Well, Shelley, you've already introduced me. <laughs> I <laughs> mainly do, uh, <laughs> you know, motivational speaking and a lot of coaching, and I write a lot of books, uh, both eBooks and you know, um, proper books that you know we we publicize. I also um, have six charities under one umbrella for girls, for the aged, play schools. So yes, I'm very busy. But basically, you know, I'm just the same as any one of your, your audience who have gone through very, very tough situations or circumstances. Um, but I've been lucky enough to have found a way uh, to overcome mine. Well, I mean, it's amazing because you were born in India, you grew up, you are so open, totally transparent about your background, your life growing up. You grew up in extreme poverty in Calcutta. Um, and truly it was not, it was a rags to riches story, one of hardship, but one of resilience. And uh, you, you share that. And so talk about, um, you're a motivational speaker and you talk all about that what is it that you're bringing and, and sharing? I mean, because you're, you're inspiring in, in so many ways. What is, what is it that you're bringing to so many? Well, Shelley, I, I think you're right. We are all shaped uh, by our pasts, meaning our childhood. You know, as Aristotle actually put it very well when he said, give me a boy of seven and I'll show you a man. For me, I think it's what I've learned as a child. Uh, I'll put it into three very simple points for you. It's toughness. So when I was a child, we were taught to toughen up quicker and faster than we could walk, really. We didn't sit there crying because we didn't get a meal or a toy or when we were sick. There was really no, no time for that. We got up every day and did our bit to help our younger siblings and our parents in any way possible. We were taught that we all, um, you know, we all had jobs to do, roles to play and tasks to complete. And that it took a combined effort to stick together as a family if we were going to make it through and overcome all of our obstacles and hardships. And the second thing I think I've learned is resourcefulness. We were taught by both our parents that you know, we were prepared to do what it took in order to survive. And that is to ask for help from the local vendors in order to save, you know, our little siblings lives, ask for food, ask for anything, ask for help. And also, you know, to go around to the local vendors, gather all their rags from under their tables, just like Dolly Parton's song, you know, my coat of many colors, we used to gather all those rags, bring it back. And my mom used to actually stitch these rags into beautiful coats and beautiful bed linen and every single thing. So we were taught to be very, very resourceful and to stay strong for the little ones. In, in essence, we were taught to be little leaders. You know, uh, in, in a way, I see, I will see that no harm comes to you and I will lead the way. So follow me kind of thing and we all did that in steps as we we grew up and the little ones were left in our in our care and the third thing I think it has to be uh, resilience we were taught to get up every time we fell down and I'm not talking uh, Shelley of you know falling down uh, from a swing or something like that I'm talking about losing home house security and sometimes even losing uh, and watching our siblings pass away in front of our, our very eyes. We were taught to be strong, 
uh, for the others and to understand that it was during uh, times of crisis that we needed to find this inner resilience because they were those who depended on us for our leadership, our strength, and you know what we, uh, our actions really, so to speak, you know, what, what we portrayed to them and what they took away from us as being a bit elder. So that's what I feel. And did you grow up in a family with siblings, boys and girls, sisters, yes. brothers? Were you yes. treated equally? Did the boys have the same responsibilities as the girls? Absolutely. We were all treated equally. We were all loved equally. And we were all uh, inspired equally also, you know, and we were all, we just grew up helping each other and caring for each other as we grew up. Yeah. That's remarkable. So these early life experiences, how did they shape who you are today? I think, like I said, I, I just said to you, uh, Shelley, it shaped me as a person. It taught me when I even joined the corporate sector, it taught me to be very tough. It taught me to do two jobs in every single bank that I worked for. It taught me to be very resourceful and it taught me to ask, be able and not be uh, fearful or embarrassed uh, to ask for help. So when I joined Bank of America, I asked the CEO for help. When I joined RBS, I asked the, CEO, asked the MD to, to, to mentor me. I was never afraid to ask for help because I knew that they could really get me up the ladder. But at what stage of life? So you grew up in extreme poverty. And then at what stage of life did you, you know, come to the corporate world and become this leader and then be able to use these skills of resourcefulness and resilience and your leadership skills to truly, you know, lead the way and influence and inspire others with these incredible life lessons. Shelley, I, you know, when I was growing up, I moved from Calcutta to the city of Delhi and I saw an ad in the newspaper. It was for an executive secretary. I joined and I got the job out of 250 girls. There were six months of tests. They were, you had, you had to meet probably half the bank and all the MDs and every single person, you know, who had a say in the matter. And finally I got that job and it was that man who changed my life forever. It was from then on that I stayed within banking. Then I moved to London and I joined, RB, I joined ABN AMRO and then I joined RBS and then I left RBS to start my own business and to start my own charity work. It's amazing. And so how did you stand out from everyone else, Julian, truly? Because there are a lot of, you know, motivational speakers and coaches and people that talk about resilience and, and people that talk about, you know, their stories of their past that have helped shape them. But you, you have stood out from so many others you know, in terms of life lessons and true experiences. Like what, what makes you stand out from everyone else and, you know, really helping others navigate their journeys and especially, you know, using these, your wisdom and your life experiences, helping to protect, you know, so many other women and, and, and vulnerable women to own their, their stories and, and shape their futures as, as you have. Shelly, you know what? I first of all, I don't even feel like I stand out at all. I just feel I had a, I had a, a calling. I grew up in abject poverty where there were thousands of children in the same area. We grew up uh, under a flight of stairs, and then we moved to live in a proper slum where, to give you an idea, almost three thousand people shared three toilets. There was hardly any electricity. We filled water from a tube well. And it was very, very difficult to live without any money, to live with possibly one meal a day. It was very hard. But when it comes to, uh, you know, my own perseverance and my need to want to help others, I think that came partly from my mother, who was highly charitable, and she brought everyone off the street and tried to help them. But I think that also came from us growing up and from me growing up and watching 
so many children just living with no hope at all and women living with no hope at all. And that's really what propelled me. And um, basically, I, I, I really strived and worked very hard to try and help. You know, my father did his best, but it was really my mother who sacrificed everything to save our lives. She didn't eat. She walked the streets to ask for help, to get us into school. And ultimately, she sacrificed everything and we lost her at the age of 53. And as children, we stayed hungry. We were left unattended and had serious accidents at home. All of that is in my book. And we even watched our younger siblings die in front of our very eyes, as I've mentioned. We were shaken to the core and like us, many, many children still to this day live like that. So I think for me, what I'm trying to do with our E3 program, which is education, empowerment, and employability, is to first make sure that women get the help that they need emotionally, financially, and mentally. And then that there are places where they can leave their children, where they know their children are safe and they can go out and work. And the third thing obviously is to provide them the skill based on their capabilities so that they can go out and find work and help their families. So this is what our E3 program is all about. And how do you, Jillian, give women that inner voice, that inner strength to keep that hope and that positivity. You know, when everything around you feels sad and hopeless and helpless, like how did you find that inner voice to say, keep going, keep pushing, keep finding that hope, and that strength, because there's gonna be a light at the end of the tunnel. Like what's that voice? What's that message in your head that keeps pushing you? I think Gandhi explains this very well when he says, be the light that you wish to see in others. And if you are that light, others will follow. And I try to be that light by actually telling them my story, telling them where I come from, I'm no role model to any one of them, but I try just to be like them. And I, so sometimes when I go to India, they fill parks full of children and, you know, teenagers from six schools, 12 schools, 15 schools. And I tell them all that if I take you by your hand right now, I can take you to the little room where we lived. I can take you to the place under the stairs where I grew up, where I washed clothes, where I fell down, where my sister fell down in a manhole you know, where my little sister got burned right to her ribs. I can tell you that we have been through everything that you have been through. And I have made it through and so can you. So believe me, if you want me to show you evidence and I show them the pictures, I give them the address and I give them all, you know, kind of evidence of what I've been through. And with that, the tears just start, the stories just come out, the selfies start, and they kind of just relate to you. and. I meet girls, you can look at my Facebook, I've put up so many stories there. I meet girls who when they first come to our, our, our center and our training courses, they don't even lift their heads. But within a year or within even eight months, I send them out to deliver speeches. I send them out to open new centers. I put them in charge of other girls. We give them jobs and you can just see them just bloom and come to life. And this is what makes me so happy, just to give another girl an opportunity. Well, I mean, said so you have a new memoir coming out September 13th, right? Yes. A Voice Out of Poverty, The Power to Achieve Through Adversity, yeah. which I, I can't wait for that. Uh, which will be so exciting. So you must come back on Unscripted so that you can show us. You don't have a copy of that yet, do you? Uh, yes, we do oh, have a copy. We can definitely it. send it to you. Can, do you have something to show? Uh, do I have something to show? Um, it's on my Facebook. Okay. It's on my Facebook and uh, you can see it there. Okay, so everyone make sure to But it's also on my website, uh, jillianhaslam.com. As you go to my website, you will see it. Okay, so we all must read that. We can't wait to, to read all about that. Very exciting. And then give us your best advice for living life unscripted. <laughs> well, 
to me, uh, Shelley, I would say living life unscripted is being in total alignment and completely comfortable with who you are and what you stand for. So no need to be fake about anything. There's no need to compete with anyone. And there's no need to bother about what others think or say about you. And this is difficult when you refuse to follow a given script. But not only is it truly liberating, but it's also very fulfilling. So that's point number one. And point number two, I would say, is come to terms with what success really and truly means for you. So try not to follow the masses. It will, in, in my opinion, and I've seen so many people in corporates talk to me about this, where I truly believe that it will come back to bite you and it will probably leave you very empty inside. And point number three is allow your vulnerability to shine through and then watch the magic begin. You know, Victor Franklin said in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, the meaning of life is to find your gift and the purpose of life is to learn how to give it away. So once we are able to move away from this status quo and this defined script that we all follow, we unconsciously open a whole new world of perspectives, opportunities, and prospects that we honestly could never have believed uh, could ever come our way. It's happened to me, and I am, you know, evidence to that fact. Wow, I could just listen to you all day long, and I, I think it is so true. The light is within all of us, but I think you do bring us all such tremendous light and love and hope and joy. And so thank you for sharing your story with so many and all that you do uh, for all of us. So I cannot wait to meet you. I am coming to London soon. Uh, I would love to see you when I'm in London and I would love to go to Calcutta with you. Uh, one me day. too, that would just be a dream come true. Thank you. For me too, I'm sending you so much love.